Right now, I'm with Gabriella Whited, a YouTuber who has promoted fitness and body image. Hi, Gabriella. Hi, how are you? I'm really good. How are you? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Um, I love what you guys are doing. So I'm, I'm so grateful you guys asked me to come on here and talk with you. Awesome. We're happy to have you. So um, you talk about fitness and wellness. Where does mental health find a place in what you do? And what was your journey to bringing mental health into your work? So from a young age, I've always been passionate about inspiring young girls to feel confident with their bodies, to feel good about working out, to feel good about eating good, just to feel good about looking good and dressing how you want. Um, feeling comfortable in your skin, you know, and eating disorders and just body dysmorphia is something I struggled with since I was 12. And it's something that it's scary to talk about. It's really scary to talk about. It's scary to be honest about those kind of feelings. And also, I feel like the way media portrays like eating disorders and like all that it seems almost like it's not valid unless like you're in the hospital or it's super serious. So I know so many of my friends and so many young girls too, who have just starved themselves to lose an insane amount of weight in a week for like a concert or just, you know, to have gone through so much to look good and be skinny and never feeling happy with their body. And I mean, it's, it's something that I think a lot of young girls and young boys to go through. So once I was posting these workout videos, I myself, I wasn't being fully honest to my fans. Like, Oh, they always were like, I wish I could be as confident as you. I wish I felt confident with my body. And the truth was like, I wasn't fully confident with myself and I was doing things that weren't right. And I, I wasn't happy with myself. I wasn't really happy with myself. And um, I just came out one day and I said, this is the truth behind my workout videos. And basically it was a video of me, which I would never, I never wanted to post this because I was embarrassed, but it was a video of me getting ready to do a workout. And I just started crying because I felt, oh my God, I look, I look so bad. I, I can't do this. Like, I can't do this anymore and pretend like, oh, I look. I'm happy with what I'm doing and I'm happy with how I feel about myself. I can't like lie like that. So I posted that and a lot of girls were like, wow, um, I can relate to that feeling. I can relate to not feeling comfortable in my skin. I can relate to all that. And they just never thought that I would go through that since I'm inspiring them, you know, to be healthy and like feel good. They didn't think that I ever struggled with that. So once I opened up about that, it really made it was it really opened up another door to mental health and body dysmorphia body dysmorphia and self love and it's been great i've i've been able to talk to a lot of girls about it so sorry that was so long but it, no. yeah it's basically just how it started yeah so. and you certainly don't need to apologize for taking the space to share honestly about your experience it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable especially to your audience and you know, you built up a, a persona and to come clean and, and be honest in that way is so inspiring. And, um, you know, I'm very inspired by you. And I think it's beautiful that you're sharing. And part of why we're here is to sort of create these conversations. What advice would you give to young women and men who are watching this, who are battling eating disorders, who are struggling with body dysmorphia, who are bombarded by images of, you know, perfection? What would you say to help those people, you know, and give them support? I would say um, to really look at yourself. And if you're on Instagram constantly comparing yourself to these perfect images you know, to magazines, to, to all those perfect images you see. And just if you're comparing yourself constantly to other people or you're comparing yourself to the number on the scale, I mean, the, just literally your self-worth has nothing to do with how much you weigh. And for me, for a long time, the number on the scale was how much I was worth. Like if Sorry, I'm saying this in such a weird way. I don't know. It's crazy to say, but like the number on the scale determined if I was happy that day, which mm -hmm. is insane to think about. So I really, I really 
I looked at what I was doing to myself and I'm like, am I happy? Am I happy not eating lunch? Am I happy skipping a meal to feel skinny? No, I'm not happy. I'm not dancing like I used to. I'm not wearing the clothes I want to because ultimately this cycle of self-hate and starving yourself to look a certain way or to fit in a size zero, that's not ever going to make you feel happy. That won't ever make you feel good about yourself. You can do all these things that you think will make you look perfect. It will, you'll never look perfect in your eyes. So what really helped me gain self-love was to focus on the things that made me happy and to focus on the things that made me feel good about myself. And that wasn't, Oh, let me not eat so I can be a hundred pounds today. Like, I mean, that's, that's crazy. It's, you, you can't live like that. You can't live like that. So if anyone is struggling with that, uh, sorry, bro, I, I'm getting like, you emotional. ever have to apologize for being emotional, right? It's, it's like, it's hard to, it's like hard to say that. It's just, it's crazy to even, I'm so far from that mindset. So it's just like hard to go back into that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, thank you, by the way, <laughs> so nice, but, um, yeah, I just think developing a healthy relationship, especially in quarantine is something that we are blessed with in this time. This time we can really sit back and think, Hmm, I love preparing the meals that I'm going to eat. I can cook with my mom or my sister and I can really enjoy and love what I'm eating and enjoy making the food instead of being like, Oh my God, I have to eat today. Like it it doesn't have to be like that. You can have a beautiful body and eat what you want and enjoy the food, enjoy cooking. I don't know. That's, that's just, it's, it's a great time to really think about what you're eating and to appreciate it. Like you have food today. That is amazing. Like some people don't. So never take that for granted. Truly don't. So that's yeah. an amazing reminder. Um, you know, you didn't say this word specifically, but it's something I was thinking about while you were explaining and sort of exploring what this trajectory has been for you. And that's shame. I think um, so much of disordered eating and body dysmorphia is, is you know, built on shame. How have you dealt with your own shame and how do you feel like people can maybe overcome the shame that inhibits them from healing? Oh, I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad. Um, yeah, it's, I think the shame comes from the idea that it's attention seeking or the idea that, I don't know, really attention seeking. That's all that I heard through middle school and high school for any girls that opened up about their eating disorder. Everyone immediate was like, Oh, they just want attention. They just want views on Instagram. I don't know. Like just crazy, crazy for being honest and open about how they feel about themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think how I dealt with the shame was to really understand that nobody's opinion had anything to do with my self-worth. And nobody's opinion could affect how I feel about myself. The only thing that can make someone really, truly embrace who they are is to be vulnerable and to be open. And if that comes with shame, so be it. At least you're able to express yourself. And if you're able to do that, you can inspire other people. And speaking up is the number one thing that connects us because so many people hide from that. And it's like, you just, you have to be vulnerable or you're always going to be under this insecurity. The insecurity will control you and you need to control your life. You need to control and own yourself love. So don't ever let the insecurity and the shame silence you. Never, never. So, yeah. Strong, empowering words to end with. Thank you so much, Gabriella, for your time and for sharing so openly and making it a safe space for other people to feel like they can share. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and anyone that's out there. I'm sending lots of love. Eat good, feel good, um, meditate, drink your tea, all that. (laughs) Thank you.